All right, so now that you guys have a little understanding of the benefits of aggression, I'm going to introduce the second part of what will be deemed the Gripstrot.com triple threat position. Any poker player will tell you position is the most important yet frequently overlooked concept in poker. Having position means we get to see what our opponents do before it is our turn to act. As you already know, poker involves the acquisition of information, and by utilizing position properly, you will be able to get the most accurate information from your bets, the most bang for your buck. Also, when we have position in the hand, we generally have control of the pot. We get to act last on each street, meaning we can often set the price for the next card, or let it come off for free. Acting after our opponents with information just allows us to play much more properly than acting first without any knowledge of our opponent's hand. Being in position also gives us the option of making sure the maximum number of bets possible go in on that street. When we are out of position, we only get to experience this advantage if our opponent falls into a trap we set for them. This ties in with us having the ability to control how big the pot will be by the end of the hand. In fact, having position is such a big advantage that if I were only to be able to pick one edge, one thing going for me in a hand, I'd take position over the lead, you know, aggression, or a good hand any day of the week. You'll probably hate hearing the word by the end of your lessons here at Grips, but you will learn to love position. All right, so here are all the positions. First, um, the dealer button is uh, whoever has the best position in the hand. Then we have the small blind and the big blind and the rest of the table. So the first group, which is the first three seats to the left of the big blind, we will call early position. Second group, next three seats to the left, we will call middle position. Uh, the cutoff and the button, so the next two seats, will be referred to as late position. And we also have the small and the big blind, which will be referred to as out of position. So again, this here button is what I call the money chip, simply because times you have it in front of you should be the times you see the biggest profits over your poker career. The closer you are to the button, as long as you are in position and not out of position, the better your position. So once everyone who is willing to pay the set price to see the flop has put their money in pre-flop, uh, the position for the remainder of the hand has been determined. So if we raise from, say, early position and everybody folds, we have what we call done by the button, which means for the price we set to steal the blinds and antes, uh, we have paid to have position in the hand because no one was willing to match the price. And after the flop, we will be the closest player to the button. So the later we raise in position, before the flop, the better our odds are of having position in the hand because it requires fewer people to fold after us for us to acquire the money chip or buy the button. All right, so let's look at absolute position or our turn in the action. By having position in a hand closest to the button, you get to act last on each betting round, as I said before. Getting to see your opponent's actions for free is a huge edge, whereas if someone else is closer to the button than we are, say we raised and we're called in position, this now puts us out of position and we must act before them and lose the advantage of this free information. So because of this advantage, as well as the fact that there are fewer people left to stop us from stealing blinds, what I will advocate throughout our lessons is to be tight, raise few hands when we are in early position, and loose, raise more hands when we are in late position and have a high likelihood of having position throughout the hand. With the lack of information playing out of position, we want strong hands that play themselves. When we don't have position, we must exercise better selection while always maintaining our aggression, that is, the balance of our triple threat. So we'll discuss specific hands in the next lesson, but what I want to hammer in is that you must always be aware of your position. Your position and aggression are more important than your actual holding. Next, we will cover relative position. It's very similar to absolute position, except relative position is our position relative to whoever opened the pot pre-flop, rather than how close we are to the button. If, however, after someone opens the pot, there is a caller ahead of us, we now gain good relative position uh, versus them. 
Now on each street, we will get to see two pieces of information rather than one before we decide what action we must take because the preflop raiser will make his decision and then we have that player sandwiched in between us and the raiser who must act before us before we make our decision. Extra information for no extra cost is what makes relative position really special. In poker, we're always trying to get every edge we can and any time we can get a discount, we'll take it. The sooner we must act after the initial raiser, the stronger our hand must be. When you see a raise, pretend that the next player beside him is now under the gun, like he were sitting beside the big blind in early position. Whoever has bad relative position will have to reveal the strength of their hand to others because they have to be afraid of what the players after them will do. They can't try to get tricky because of the risk of getting trapped for their stack by trying to play fancy well out of position. We'll touch a lot more on relative position in the live sessions, but what's important for now is to know. The worse your relative position, the better your hand must be, same with absolute position, and the worse your relative position, the harder it will be to disguise your hand. Hopefully you can understand why it's important to disguise our hand whenever possible. We're always trying to get accurate information from our opponents to make good decisions while not giving out accurate information on our holdings, making it difficult for our opponents to play properly. So just before we call it a video on this topic, I'm going to throw a quiz at you guys to see if you understand the difference between relative and absolute position. I'm going to show you two hands. I suggest pausing the video after each hand sees the flop. And of the players involved in seeing the flop, I want you to rank in order who has the best and worst absolute position and who has the best and worst relative position. Uh, just a note in the second hand, the second clip, Gedwin82 folds out of position first. This is just a glitch. Gedwin was not actually dealt into the hand and the replayer just didn't recognize it. So for the sake of the quiz, just pretend it's an empty seat.